a hotel room with no shampoo in it? How can that be? Hair dryers, turn down service, shoe shine. Oh my God, that didn't happen before? Yeah, it didn't happen before. Uh, when I joined in the, in the mid 80s, an emphasis on healthy eating. You didn't eat healthily in the 80s. You came into the, into the restaurant at the Four Seasons, you had two martinis before lunch, you drank a bottle of wine, you had a four course meal, and then you went back to the office and took a snooze. Right? That was our business place. Well, guess what? We were offering what we called alternative cuisine back then, lowering calories, cholesterol, sodium, and fat, having workout facilities in hotels. Right? All these are industry standards now, right? but they've come up as, as a focus from, from ourselves, basically putting ourselves in the shoes of the client, the customer, the guest, and saying, what would I want if I were sitting here? It's not that difficult, right? Okay, quality. We will only operate medium-sized hotels of exceptional quality with an objective to be the best. What's a medium-sized hotel? Who wants to shout out? Take a guess. Three to five hundred. Sorry, three to five hundred? Good guess. We don't operate any 5,000 room Las Vegas extravaganzas. Okay, we don't have any five room boutique hotels. We do have some smaller hotels. The smallest we have in the company is about 90 rooms. Um, Four Seasons Milan, which is a 15th century monastery, is our smallest hotel. And it goes up to 400, 450 rooms, okay? So a typical Four Seasons is 250 rooms. That's what we, we view to be the perfect size so that we can make sure the quality happens. You can, you can look at some of the big, uh, the big beasts particularly Vegas we think of, like Bellagio, 5,000 rooms. How do you make quality happen? How do you get personalized service? Think about it. Who's, who's been at Bellagio or hotels in Vegas? The big ones, right? What did you think? What was your first impression? <laughs> yeah, line, 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 right? It's always, you're always waiting for something, right? So Izzy actually had an opportunity uh, in, the, in the late 60s to make a lot of money uh, by building a thousand room Sheraton in Toronto, which is still there. And he could have made a couple of million bucks, which in the late 60s, that's a lot of cash for a builder who has no money in his pocket. See, could I do the Sheraton, have a couple of million set for life, or... But he stayed true to what he had already figured out in life was he wanted to produce a quality of hotel that he could be proud of. The springboard there, actually, sorry, real quick, is Four Seasons London, which is our oldest operating hotel. It opened in 1970. Um, and again, growing up in London for me, when I first found out about Four Seasons, to walk into that hotel, you could sense a difference. Not that there were better chandeliers or better carpets, but just that the service and the people were different from an employee perspective. So on to service. Um, True luxury is defined not by architecture or decor, but by service. Who's ever been back to a hotel because they have great chandeliers? Anybody? Great carpets, perhaps? No? Why do you go back to a hotel? People. Service, people, the experience. Right? It's how you feel. It's an emotional decision. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Simple as that. And if you liked it, chances are you'll go back. Right? And you like it because the service is there or the service is not there. So truly a, a, a defining factor. Four Seasons must make the quality of our service our distinguishing feature and a competitive advantage. Um, what we really try and do is give you the gift of time when you're staying in our hotel. So if you're a, a corporate guest, let's say you work for IBM, you've just flown in from Toronto into Vancouver, You've got a laptop, you've got a little rollaway bag. What do you want out of that experience when you check into our hotel? You want it to be fast. Give me my key, let me get up to my room, I've got emails to do, I've got to jump in the shower, I've got to get a shirt pressed, I need my shoes shine, I've got to be in the bar by 6.15, I've got an important get together and then I've got dinner. Whew. Right? Time is of the essence. We have to produce that gift of time. If we foul up, what's gonna happen? No return visit, bad PR, the guy's gonna tell 
yeah, at least nine. If you're lucky, nine. Ah, oh, God, I went to the Four Seasons. Arr. Okay, that's not good for our business model, right? So we've got to be effective for that guest. Then you've got the guest who checks in at the Four Seasons Maui with maybe their family, and oh, it's the vacation of a lifetime. Their definition of service is going to be completely different, right? They've just come in from New York. They're stressed. They were up at 4 in the morning, New York time. And it's now midday Hawaii time, which is 6 p.m., right? They've been on the road for 12 hours, 14 hours maybe. They need a different kind of love when they check in, right? They're looking for a hug. They're looking for a cold glass of passion orange something, some lays around their neck that are ice cold. So they go, oh, this is great. Here we are. And then they're looking to be pampered at the pool. Right, and not rushed, so they can relax. And we've got to figure that out. Which kind of guest are you? Because there are some guests that check in at Maui, and they're still doing this, and their blackberries in their hand. This isn't a very relaxing vacation. Well, no, of course it isn't. You need to relax. <laughs> and then we'll help you with that. Right? And that's where the hugs really come in. We have to kill them with kindness, show them the love. Okay, and eventually, ah. <sighs> They all calm down in the end. They take three or four Mai Tais, but they all calm down in the end. So personalizing that service is critical. Um, I've just got one, we, we call them wows, just little service things that happen each and every day in all of our hotels, okay? We truly empower our, our employees to go out there and just be creative and to take that guest and say, what do I need to do to get you right to personalize my service, okay? Or truly go in above and beyond and make the guests go, you gotta be kidding me, how did you do that? Right, and make the memory of a lifetime. So I'll just, just use this one, I brought three or four, but just in the interest of time. This is a banquet example, Art was cleaning a room after an event, right? So he's a banquet porter, okay? He encountered the group organizer Art and the group organizer got talking, and he shared, she shared with Art that she'd been away from home for a long period of time, and being Filipino, she was missing home-cooked Filipino food. Finding out the group organizer was gonna be in the hotel for a couple more days, Art returned the next day with a dish of Filipino food his wife had prepared the night before. Can you imagine how that organizer felt? And what's she gonna do? What's she gonna do? Tell her family and come back and bring more business, right? Just from a simple, we call it a random act of kindness, right? We're in the hospitality business, guys. First and foremost, never forget we're in the hospitality business. We're not in the hotel business, we're in the hospitality business. Okay, so nobody told Art to do that. That came from the heart which is ultimately where service has to come from if it's gonna be real, okay? So a little bit more on that later. Uh, culture is the third pillar, <clears throat> excuse me. We'll create a work ethic based on the golden rule to give our people a framework to pursue a superior service culture. Um, this was 1980, Izzy kind of put this forth. Uh, this had always been an implicit operating philosophy, but in 1980, he kind of stuck it out there and said, this is how we're gonna run our company. And if you can't do this, you need to leave the company. And there are actually quite a few senior executives at that time who had to say farewell, okay? Because this is really all about the golden rule, right? Um, deal with others as you would have them deal with us or deal unto others. Fairly simple life philosophy, but not all companies hold this close to their heart, right? We won't ask for examples. Final.